Okay, so welcome. Sorry, there's so much going on in the background. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, so this is chair yoga, and we will start in our chair. Unless you are a person who is more comfortable on the floor than in a chair, in which case you can just take a seat. Take a moment to close your eyes or soften your gaze. Maybe take your shoulders up to your ears. Tense, 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 and then exhale, let them roll down the back. Couple more times, shoulders up to your ears. Then exhale down and back. So a few more times, exploring with your own breath. You can have eyes open or closed. As you tense and release, maybe you feel some jazz in your neck. Gently move your head around. A full breaths. Don't involve your whole arm as you tense your shoulders. Go for it. Just take a few moments to wiggle before we settle. I'm doing some arm swings. Make it as fun as you like. <laughs> yeah. Let's swing around for a few more breaths and then we'll come to sit. You can get really fun with it if you want. Do <laughs> what feels right for you. Most of you I can't see, so be as weird as you want. When you decide that you've gotten all your jiggles and wiggles out, maybe feel a bit more open or ready to go, go ahead and sit in a comfortable seat with an upright spine to make sure your low back is up or slightly in. You don't have to have your push flipping out, but just feel for a little low back curve. Just make sure your back is not spilling back or rounded at the low back. Draw your ears back, sides of the throat back, shoulder blades down the back, belly tones, tailbone anchors down. And if you're in a chair, you've got knees over ankles, feet parallel, and relatively straight forward, as if you could draw a line from the second or third toe through the middle of the heel. Take a few moments to breathe. Settle in. Go for breathing in a way that feels like it meets your needs. Maybe that's for calm. Maybe it's for uplift, maybe both. Maybe you want to feel more settled, less anxious. Go for filling the space with your breath in a way that's appropriate and meaningful for you. Notice if your shoulders are creeping up towards your ears. Maybe lift the shoulders so that you have more space on the sides of your waist. And then keep that space on the side of the torso to take the bottom tips of shoulder blades together onto your back. So finding space through the sides of the lungs. But then that draping down, that wrapping in of the shoulder blades. So for a lift 
through the neck, through the crown of the head, as if you had a golden string at the back of the head, lifting you all the way up towards today's beautiful, sunny, or at least warm skies. Take a few more moments here, just to breathe, to be in our bodies. You could bring a hand on to your person, anywhere that needs some support. On your next exhale, blink, open your eyes, return to the room. I'll sit in my chair now. More of a floor person, but I'll, I'll join you. So go ahead and make sure that you've got knees over ankles, feet parallel. So most of us during the day probably do some kind of this thing, right? <laughs> Supported by the chair. So maybe just use the front of the chair as you tip the pelvis forward or at least have it level side to side. We're really just, again, we don't want the pelvis, the front to be higher so that your low back is rounded. Bring your hands to your thighs, press into your feet. If you wanna activate the legs, you can lift and spread the toes and then inhale, go ahead and lift the heart, lift the tailbone, exhale, tailbone scoops under, Round through the belly, round the upper back. Every inhale, lift and open. And then exhale, come and tuck the tail under, round the upper back, shoulder blades spread apart. Keep going with your own breath. You try a little head tilt, a little jiggle. You could shift or shimmy. Just feel for opening up the whole spine from head to tail. This is seated cow cat. Cat cow is the same thing, but I say cow cat because we inhale into cow pose, giving the space across the front of the heart. And then exhale, diaphragm lifts up as we round the upper back, invite the air out. Few more rounds. Okay, let's take one more or so. Okay, I got into it. I did a couple more. <laughs> when you're ready, let's release. All right, from here, let's go. In a moment, we're going to stand. Instead of just grabbing the chair, let's go ahead and hinge from the hips. Bring your torso forward to a 45 degree. If you've still got those toes lifted, you can press them down. Go ahead and like you're skiing, stand into the feet, bring yourself up. Just see how that feels to support your weight as you stand. If you're not sure what just happened and you want to sit down again, again, we're tilting forward to a 45 degree, standing into the feet, pressing down, bent knees, stand. Great. Looks good. All right. Let's just open up all the muscles. Well, maybe not all of them, but most of them. So go ahead and stand feet hip width, outer hip width distance apart. Then we'll just begin to go side to side. So you can come onto the ball of one foot. Let the arms swing. Let yourself go. Yeah. You can tap your low back and your belly. You can even hear a little slappy sound, gentle slappy sound. And we'll go ahead and bring one fist, make a loose fist to the opposite shoulder, like the chest shoulder junction. 
And you can bring the other back of the fist to the mid back if it reaches, if not, no worries. Okay, begin to slow it down. Begin to bring the hands down, back to that belly and kidney area. Okay, great. Come back to center. Awesome. And go ahead and have your feet inner hip foot distance, so hip bones. Knees and second toes straight forward and just soften your knees a bit and try to feel for standing straight up. So notice if you're like me and you just pop your tush, pop a hip, tone your belly, tailbone down, slide the ears back so that you've got one long line, ears over shoulders, over hips, over knees, over ankles. Great, you can let the palms shine out or you could bring them onto your person somewhere. You can close your eyes and just find your balance here. See how it feels. Okay. Go ahead and open your eyes. Bring the inner edges of your feet together, bunions permitting, I always say. And either bring your heels together or if you're like a bony ankle person like me, you have a little gap through your heels, but make sure your kneecaps aren't rotating in. Make sure your knees are straight forward. So if you're like me and your knees just kerfluffle, go ahead and <laughs> unkerfluffle them. Just make sure your knees are the same direction. Your feet are relatively together. Heels might be together or slightly separated. Okay, go ahead and bring your hands palm to palm together in front of your heart. Lift your elbows, drop your shoulder blades down your back. And then gently close your eyes. If this becomes immediately insane, open your eyes and gaze softly at the floor. So gently pressing those hands together. It's like you're standing on one giant foot, like you're a monopod. And breathe here. Notice if the weight tends to fall to a certain part of your foot. Try to anchor through all four corners of your feet. Big toe ball mound, pinky toe ball mound, either edge of the heel, or maybe you like to imagine a triangle. Big toe, little toe ball mounds, and then just that center of the heel. Let's try to spread the weight evenly through the feet here. Okay. Go ahead and open your eyes. Let's go ahead and take the feet back to hips with distance. And now we're going to do all the things from my New York Times article about balance. <laughs> all right, so the first thing we're going to do is just gauge where we are. So if you're not sure of your balance today or in general, Go ahead and have one hand beside the chair, just so you have some support. We do not want to fall over. And when you're balancing, there is always the potential to fall over. So just be near the chair. You can use it. You cannot use it. Don't let your ego get in the way of using the chair. I love support. All right. So the leg that is away from the chair, soft bend to the worn tighter pants, soft bend in both knees, and then shift your weight into the foot that's beside the chair. Hold the chair or don't. Let's all, let's all hold the chair. So have at least one hand on the chair, the chair, the same hand that's the foot beside the chair. Come onto the ball of the other foot and then soft bend in the knees, lift that knee towards your nose, flex the foot till you've got a level pelvis. So there's not one hip in the air. And you've got your knee towards your nose. And then you can, if you're catching your balance, you could cross your arms over. We'll stand for one, two, three, four, five, six. You can always hold the chair, seven, 
eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, 21, 22, 23, my foot's starting to burn, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, left step down. Okay, so New York Times told me to do that 10 seconds, but I got jazzed and so if you did it for even 10, you're amazing. Let's go ahead and step around the chair, see what our other leg is up to. Let's all start holding the chair. And if you ever want to come back to the chair, that's totally cool. Mm -hmm. Yep, some of us need the chair and that's amazing. I love the chair. Uh, it's actually more advanced to use support when you need it than to have your ego get in the way of using the chair. So, you know. Again, the chair is available. It's your your pal for today and forever. Chairs are literally designed to hold your weight. So let it hold your weight. Okay, opposite leg is beside the chair. Start out parallel, level, knees slightly bent. And then go ahead and root into that chair leg, ball of the opposite foot. Okay, I'm going to teach you some tricks, <laughs> yoga tricks. So one thing that happens when balance is tricky is we tend to fall forward. So shift more weight into the heel of that foot, but keep a bend in the knee so you're not loft. So whichever leg is your chair leg, just for a moment, play with shifting the weight forward and back. Notice if you tend to spill forward, especially for someone who locks their knee, your weight will spill into your foot. Get more weight into the heel and then take the top of the thigh back, tailbone down. Top of the thigh back, it'll lift your tush, tailbone down. And then tune your belly like you mean it. And then you can lift that opposite leg. Okay, let's hold our chair for a few breaths and just figure out what we got going on. You can cross one palm. Let's flex that foot, level the pelvis, tone your belly. Again, one, two, three, four, maybe you lift, five, six, you can always hold the chair, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. Don't let your knee lock. Look, I just fell over. 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, almost done. 39. 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Keep your pelvis level, lift the knee, step it down. Let's shake. Ooh. <laughs> so whatever you just did, really great. Loved it. You're amazing. Okay, so that was both kind of a gauge of balance in the New York Times article. And it was the first thing. So we've only got four more things that we get to do. Oh, but the next one is kind of, you know what? The next one will make it fun. The next one's squats, which I do not want to tell you because you might not like that, but it's squats. So we're going to do them a little bit yoga style. It'll be more fun. So we're going to take a breathing exercise, a pranayama uh, called wood chopper breath. I do not know the Sanskrit right now. So in a moment, we'll take our hands, we'll interlace into a little fingers-free situation. 
second fingers. And then we'll stand with our feet out our hip width distance apart, soft bend in the knees, and then we'll sniff it out the nose. So it will be a short, sharp exhale through the nose. And it's a snot rocket, so just have tissues. And we'll try this a few times. So we'll go slow. So inhale and inhale. Let it go. Inhale. Let it go. And then find your rhythm. If your knees and toes are pointing in the same direction, you're not going to do this forever. There are your sinuses. Complimentary for spring allergy season. Couple more if you want to go fast. You can do it. Just make sure the knees are not doing crazy stuff. Three more. Next time you come down, just let yourself swing. You can bend your knees, bring the hands to the ground or to your ankles, or just let them dangle. <sighs> let your head hang. Let yourself be like a sad marionette. <laughs> <sighs> and go ahead and bring hands to hips, bend into the knees, sit down to come up. All right, New York Times. Next thing is something that's best done on the floor. So we're going to let it go. We'll save it for yoga for anxiety. And here's a fun slash not fun one. All right. So hand to the chair. And then whichever leg is free, soft bend in both knees. And then we're going to tone the belly and just lift that leg out to the side. Lift it a little or a lot. So try not to let this hip of the chair leg swoosh to the side. So you're using those stabilizer muscles to draw up as you flex that opposite foot and bring it out. You can have hand on the chair, other hand on the belly. We won't do this 45 seconds again, but just try to keep yourself stable. Your pelvis will be offset a little as you lift that leg out. Pro tip, flex that foot. It will protect the knee and the ankle and it'll make it easier to lift. So again, hold the chair or don't hold the chair. Tone your belly, tailbone down. Mm, these are hard. Couple more. I'm sorry I didn't count. We're gonna do what we do on the second side. All right, let's do two more. I'm gonna make them bigger. Oh, maybe you don't wanna make them bigger. Sorry for the sounds. Gonna have to listen to all my sounds. And then step down, a little shaky shaky. Ooh, we're also getting some abs in here. All right, let's step around the chair. Let's do that one more time. Our last exercise looks simple. We'll see how it goes. All right, so second side for this. So again, soft bend in the knees, no locking of the joints. Hold the chair to start just to see, and then go ahead and Level the pelvis as best you can. It will offset a little, but don't let that hip sag to the side if you can help it. So tone, consolidate, and go ahead and inhale, lift. Oh God, this side's worse. Exhale, come back. Oh man, this side is so tight. So you don't, you're not getting points for going high. You're getting points for balancing. So again, soft bend in that standing leg knee. Don't go crazy because we have to do some more to even out because again it didn't count so be reasonable oh the side is like 20 times worse hold the chair or don't ooh, ooh, ooh. if you think you need the chair little palm on the chair feels sweet oh okay we're almost done let's do like five more mm. I feel bad for you guys sometimes because you have to listen to all my my sounds. <laughs> okay, we're almost done. I, I didn't count again. 
All right, let's be done. Little shaky dance time. Okay. <laughs> Last thing is called a tandem leg stance. So what we're going to do, let's walk around the chair again, just for variety. And you're going to have, preferably without shoes. <laughs> I'm glad it's validating. No, things are happening in my human body. Yes, great. Glad you're into the sounds. I actually hold some back, but you know, we'll see what happens. Okay, the last thing is tandem leg stance. So you're going to have, and I could have said this earlier, um, if you're not at the office and you are in a place where you know about the floor cleanliness, you could be barefoot. Um, sorry, I didn't say that. It, it just gives you more like articulation through your foot. You can really feel the floor. So whichever hip is beside the chair, you're going to soft bend in the knees, hands to the hips, and then you'll step the opposite foot. Ooh, this is hard. Right in front of that foot that's beside the chair. And then you can hold the chair here, tone your belly. So all you're doing is you have one foot in front of the other. It's actually not, it's like a tightrope. Not as easy as it looks. Soft bend in the knees, tailbone down, belly tone. And then we just stand and it does say 30 seconds. So we're kind of going to try that. All right. So get yourself situated and then do what you need to do. Hold the chair, cross your arms, just gently palms out. Doesn't say what to do with the arms, which is a law in this New York Times article. going to call it out. <laughs> I've seen a lot of balance tests with positions you cross so that your arms aren't really helping you counterbalance. That makes it harder. If you have a hand on the chair, that's amazing. Please do that. Other arm could just hang or come to your tummy. Okay. We're all ready for the circus. <sighs> Actually, I took, I had a birthday gathering once at the Philadelphia School of the Circus Arts. It was really fun. And for like an hour, you can, you get 20 minutes on the rope, 20 minutes on the silks, which are the big parachute -y fun things, and 20 minutes on the trapeze. And I used all my strength climbing to the top of the warehouse on the rope because I could never do that as a small child. So FYI, if you ever go there, save your strength. <laughs> And release. Okay, little jiggle. Mm -mm 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 and opposite side of the chair. Okay, so chair leg, soft bend in the knee. Then step with hand on chair, that other foot right in front. Little bend in the knees, level the hips, tone the belly, tailbone down. Cross the arms or hold your chair, pal. This side could be like you have a different human body. And here we go. Ooh, it's wobbly. Tone it like you mean it. Also, if you have hands on shoulders or maybe one hand on the shoulder, use that to allow the shoulders to drop down so you get some space for your neck. Get a little bonus shoulder action while we're here. Extra credit if you lift the corners of your mouth and smile. Advanced yoga. Notice if your head is dropping forward like mine is. Take the chin back. And release. 
Okay, last moment to prance, jiggle, wiggle, <laughs> whatever you want. And now we get to sit down. So go ahead and return to your chair. I'm just gonna come sit near you guys. Get yourself all square, situated. And then bring two fingers to your chin. And try to make sure that your chin isn't jutting up. This will obstruct your airway. Also, if your chin is way tucked, it will obstruct your airway. So feel for a level chin parallel to the ground. Then two fingers, either hand to your chin. Okay, so go ahead and as you exhale, push those fingers into your chin like you're giving yourself a double chin. And just feel length on the back of your neck, then release. So go ahead and push those fingers back towards your chin. Feel back of the neck lengthen up. Hold for a few breaths. And release. And we'll try it a few more times. So push back. And how long you hold, I'm going to leave up to you. A couple more with your own breath. Just trying to feel that engagement. We often do this with our heads, but we rarely retract. So this just helps us get that natural setting back of the head that so many of us are missing. Okay, couple, like 10 more seconds, so finish up. And release. Let your right ear fall towards your right shoulder. Go ahead and bring that right hand around for opposite side of the head. Instead of pushing down, just use the weight of your hand on your head to allow that right ear to fall towards shoulder. And you can adjust the angle of chin towards chest. You find the magical place in your neck that you want to stretch. So tone your belly. Lift through the heart, so stay tall. You can close your eyes and really lean into it. I'm bringing my opposite hand to my low belly to just keep myself consolidated here. Okay. That top hand, reach around for right side of your head. Cradle your head, see if you can get your head a little bit heavier. And then push the hand into the head, come on up. Great, we'll do it again. So left ear towards left shoulder. Take a moment here, chin towards chest, adjust your angle. See what you got going on. And then that Left hand around for opposite side of the head. Don't push, but just use the weight of that hand as if it's a reminder on your head to assist that left ear towards left shoulder. Opposite hand could come to low belly, low ribs, maybe your heart. And then maybe close your eyes and lean into it. Couple more breaths. And allow that top hand to slide the same side of the head. Let your head fall into your hands and then help the head back up. Release. Okay. Let's go ahead and level the chin again. So if you're not sure where it is, just make sure it's level. That's just a good thing to know. 
I tend to do this. <laughs> uh, so, you know, get it good. And then go ahead and inhale, turn your gaze over to the right. See how far back you can see. Maybe you feel the mess and the random stuff behind you, no problem. And exhale back through center. Inhale over to your left. See if you can see the same stuff or different stuff. Don't strain. Exhale through center. Go a few more times with your own breath, trying to keep your, notice if you're just flapping your shoulders, try to keep your shoulders forward as you turn the head. I'll isolate the twist in the cervical spine. Move with your own breath. Side to center on your own time. Okay. Next time you look to your left, that'll be your last rotation. Come back to center. Let's go ahead and allow the chin to fall towards the chest. So tucking, bring that link on the back of the spine. You might feel a stretch up towards that ridge at the back of the head, the occipital ridge. And exhale, lift back to neutral. Inhale, take the head up and back, up and back, up and back. Shoulder blades down. Exhale through center. And take a few more tilts with your own breath. Try to keep, instead of letting your belly sag and yourself collapse, try to keep lift through the sides of the waist, through the heart. And again, head arcs back rather than flopping. Don't be a muppet. They don't have necks. <laughs> so extend up and back. All right, we'll take our last one here, ending with going back, coming through center on your own time, release. If you've got glasses, you can pop them onto your head and then warm your hands. Hey, warm, 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 warm. And close your eyes, heels of the hands to your warm, or warm heels of the hands to your eyeballs. <laughs> Drop the shoulders down the back, lift through the sides of the waist, lift through the heart. Maybe even push back of the head back so that you sit back into the dark. Slowly release, keep eyes closed, warm once again. And then you're going to cross your right palm. Sorry, I didn't do this well. Okay, open your eyes if you don't know what's going on. Warm, and then cross your wrist. Take your right palm to your left shoulder, left palm to right shoulder. Just remember which one's on top because I forgot to mirror you. Close your eyes and let your shoulder blades fall down your back. Okay, go ahead and keep the eyes closed now that you know what's happening. Warm again. We'll do the opposite cross. So left arm crosses in front, hand to each shoulder. Let those shoulders drape down the back. Using the warmth of your hands, lift through the heart, tone the belly, bring those shoulders down the back. And one more time, warm it up. This time we're going to just stack our palms one atop each other over the heart. So right hand to the heart, left palm on top, let the shoulders drape, elbows point down, lift through the heart, gentle, lift through the crown of the head. Go ahead and warm, 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 warm. Should be warm by now. 
And then left hand to the heart, right palm on top, elbows down, shoulders down, but lift through the crown of the head so you have space on your neck. And then last rub, go ahead and warm your hands. And then close the eyes, heel of each hand to each eyeball, drop those shoulders, but lift through the heart, tone the belly so your torso doesn't sag. Maybe sit back to your sit bones, letting yourself retreat into the dark. And from here, you can keep the eyes closed, dropping your hands to your left. Take a few breaths, exhaling through your mouth. We'll sit back into Shavasana, final rest. Taking a few minutes to just let go. If you want to allow yourself to sag, that's okay. Maybe feel the full support of the chair, or if you're feeling really open and great, see if you can find a place where you can balance here and be held upright with minimal effort. Take any time to take any wiggles or adjustments you want to make. And when you are ready, slowly release Javasana, final rest. Please begin to feel your feet connecting with the ground. Maybe taking a moment to press into the floor, press into your seat, get a little heavier, more solid as you invite yourself back into your body, back into the room. And so you're ready, you can begin to deepen or become aware again of the breath, expanding your awareness from the inside out, back into the container of this room and this Zoom. 
As you're ready, you could take your hands in front of your heart, warm them one more time, if that feels right. And then whichever palm feels right, you can stack your palms over your heart, lift your heart into your hands, and take a moment to find some gratitude for something you may have experienced today. May each of us continue to find our footing, to find our balance when things get wobbly, off center, or weird. May each of us step with more certainty and more support into the world. Have a wonderful week. Peace.